In this video, we get to start talking about important things like item play. We're going to talk about in control, out of control, and what it means to cycle the items. And we're back on the catalyst. This is a great map to talk about item control. So there are three armors on this map. A yellow armor over here by the Mega Health, a yellow armor up here by the Ion Cannon, and one more red armor down there. You should know this already. So let's say you're a new player like I was, and you get armors just when it's convenient for you. So you pick up a lot of armor, now I'm ready to fight. You get in a fight, you lose your armor, and you go back looking for more. This is not the way to play the game. You're going to get obliterated if you play this way. You need to be productive and keep getting items the entire game whether you need them or not. Because if you don't, it'll be about 10 seconds till the other guy gets a stack just like yours, and then you're not in a good position anymore. For any new players, this is how fights usually go when you have a lot of armor and they have no armor. Even though he hits me first with a direct rocket, it doesn't matter. He would need to hit three more to win the fight, and I only need to hit one. The fight was decided by item play before it even started. So there are only these three armors on the map. If you're taking all of them, what does that leave for your opponent? Nothing. So let's think. If I was just playing by myself and there's no enemy to stop me, I could take every single armor on the map. And even without using the movement system, if I just run in between the armors, I have plenty of time to make it back to the first armor I picked up. So it's easily possible to take all the items on the map. This is an ideal situation that you're going to try to go for in a real game. If you are able to take all three armors on the map and continue to take all three armors on the map, you have a huge advantage in every single fight. You have plenty of time to take all of them. This is called full control. The other player is going to be completely out of control. In most games, it's going to be a mix of the two, where you're going to be taking some armors and they're going to be taking some armors. But for the entire game, you're fighting to get into full control if you can. Once you're in full control, you're going to have a lot more armor than your opponent. But you have to keep picking up the armors. It's a zero-sum game. And armors are worth the most when you have some and they have none. So you're continually picking up the armors to prevent him from getting any not because you necessarily need it. Having full control is a huge advantage, but you need to remain productive throughout the game to hold on to it. If you make any mistakes, your opponent can kill you and take over your cycle where you left off and put you in a very bad position. Unless you're much more skilled than your opponent, it's going to be hard to hold on to full control. The first problem you're going to run into is that after you pick up a red armor, the game will no longer let you pick up a yellow armor because you have too much. You're going to have to reduce your armor to below 131 red before it will let you pick up this yellow. There's only two ways to do this. You can either damage yourself below 131 and then the game will let you pick it up, or you have your opponent damage you below 131. So which option is better? If you're over here shooting yourself with rockets, just because your opponent doesn't have any armor doesn't mean he does any less damage than you. You put yourself in a very vulnerable position, he might just kill you. If you're going to do this risky method, you need to make sure the area is clear and the other player is very afraid of you. If he is any in any position where you can attack him, you should. You should get in a fight with him, allow him to damage you while doing as much damage as you can to him. Whether you kill him or not, you will be able to stack up on this armor because he will have done the damage for you. Since you're the player who's in control, you have the option after that fight to replenish your stack. He has no access to armor, so he will not be able to replenish his stack. So even if you don't kill him in that fight, you will put yourself in a much better position for the next armor. Here's an example of a top player using this method in a recent tournament. The yellow armor near the Mega Health is the next armor in the cycle. Notice how he attacks the out of control player aggressively, but still keeps himself in between him and the armor. That way, when the fight goes badly, he's able to fall back on the armor while his opponent just has to run away. Another problem you're going to run into when you're in control is spending too much time chasing after the enemy trying to kill him or trying to get him to damage you. A good out-of-control player will try and waste your time and ruin your cycle. 
if you spend too much time worrying about him and not worrying about the armors, other armors on the map will start coming up. If you spend too much time on this yellow, for example, the next yellow here will come up and then the red. If all three armors on the map are up, it's going to be very difficult to keep the out of control player from getting any. The best way as a new player to stay out of bad situations when you're in control is by always trying to keep yourself in between the out of control player and the armor, whether that armor has spawned yet or not. So for example, if this armor is the next armor to spawn and the out of control player is up here by this teleporter trying to keep you from it, the best thing to do is, by, is to try to always stay in between him and the armor. That way he can never get around you and steal it and also, if the fight starts going badly, you are always closer to the armor than he is, so you can just back off into it and restack and force him to leave the fight. Another reason is if you feel like he's wasting your time and the other armors are spawning. If you get that feeling like you have to get back to your cycle, you haven't strayed far enough from the armor that you can't fix your cycle first. Remember, there's no real pressure to fight in a duel. If you think the fight is going badly and you're in control, go back and fix your cycle before fighting him again. It's a much worse situation to lose control than it is to lose out on one kill. Now that you know some strategies for in control, it's important that you also learn some strategies for out of control. A real game is going to be a mix of the two, and you need to be able to play effectively in both situations. If you end up completely out of control in a match, that means that the in-control player is using his items to keep you from getting any items. Remember what happens when one player has armor and one player doesn't? You can't fight him directly. There are two stages to regaining some control once you've completely lost all of it. This is how you're going to want to play the first stage of your out of control play. The in control player is going to be cycling through the armors and has a lot of stack, very dangerous, and you're not going to have anything. So you're going to want to stay on the opposite side of the map to him always. Listen for where he is. He's going to move from one side of the map to the other and continually cycle the items. Stay on the opposite side of the map to him and collect weapons and anything he left up on the map. After you do this for a cycle, you should have all the weapons you need to try and contest his control. After stage 1, where you did your best to stay away from the in-control player and gather weapons and anything you could, it's time to move to stage 2 where you contest their control. It's not enough to just run away and try and stay alive for the whole game because you're not going to be getting any kills as the out-of-control player, and it's also very easy for the in-control player to kill you. So what you want to do is you want to delay him, waste his time, and be a problem for him so that the in-control player makes a mistake and you're able to take an armor. So you take positions where you don't fight him directly. For example, if the in-control player and you are fighting over this armor, you don't want to directly put yourself in a fight with him. Instead, you want to play a position back here where you can still do damage to him, but if he rushes you, you're able to back away and not die. There are a lot of good positions like this on maps, and, but most of them are choke points or far enough away to where if the in-control player chases you, it wastes too much of their time and they're going to lose their cycle. You don't want to die as the out-of-control player, obviously, but if you do, just move back to stage one, stay away from him, gather weapons, and repeat and try again until you can get some control back. The point of Playing positions like these as the out-of-control player is that it gets in the way of where the in-control player needs to go. To keep control, the in-control player has to move from this yellow armor to the next yellow armor. In this example, the out-of-control player is blocking him from going that route. Remember that just because the out-of-control player has less armor does not make him do any less damage. He's no less scary if he positions in a place where he is impossible to kill. If the in-control player rushes him trying to kill him, and the out-of-control player feels like he doesn't have enough time on that armor, he can just back away and live to fight another day. However, if the out-of-control player delays the in-control player for long enough, 
You can back up through here, spam rockets, delay him for long enough. You can take this yellow armor from him and in effect resume his cycle where he left off. Reflex is not a clear-cut game, so it's difficult to understand how to retake control without seeing an example. Here's me retaking control after losing everything in a recent tournament. I'm in a very bad spot, with no weapons or armor, and the enemy's in full control. Since I would lose a direct fight, first I go to stage 1 of out of control, where I listen for my opponent, stay away from him while gathering weapons. I know the longer I spend out of control, the more times I'm going to die, so I waste no time getting to stage 2. I know the Ion Cannon Yellow is next up in the cycle, and with all the weapons gathered, I put myself in between the in-control player and the armor. This delays him long enough that I'm able to take it, win the next fight, and resume his cycle to retake control. You might notice that we're making use of similar tactics that we made use of as the in-control player. In both cases, we're trying to remain in between the enemy and the next armor coming up. That way we're closer to it in a fight. In the case of the in-control player, we want the fight to be fast. We want to kill the enemy, get him to damage you, or get him to leave. But we don't want to spend too much time or we're going to lose the cycle. As the out-of-control player, we want the opposite. We want the fight to take as long as possible. The point of fighting is not necessarily to kill the in-control player, which is unlikely. Instead, it's to delay him long enough to take the next armor in the cycle and put yourself in a better position for the next fight. The success of this playstyle and the success of pretty much any good playstyle in Reflex relies on knowing what armor is up next in the cycle. If you don't know what armor is up next, you're not going to be productive on the map. You're not going to know where to be, and the enemy is just going to take all the items and kill you. Here's what you need to do. Go into a map by yourself and start cycling. Start anywhere you want. Move to the next armor. Take it. And then the armor after that and get back to your initial armor with plenty of time. Self damage for it, and continue the cycle. Try and keep it going to the point where you're standing on the armor before it spawns, and no armors spawn out of turn, so you're running the entire map. Once you do a couple cycles of this, you'll figure out that you have a lot of time in between picking up the armors to do other things. This is when you might take Mega. When you're brand new, just focus on cycling the armors, and don't worry too much about the Mega. But once you get a little more comfortable cycling the items, you'll realize you have plenty of time to take it in between the cycle. In a real game, this is time you should be using to chase down your enemy, get into fights, but make sure to always be back at the armor before it spawns. If you're chasing the enemy and an armor is about to spawn, you need to turn around and go for it. Timers are a good learning tool. If you pick the casual rule set, you'll have them on. But keep in mind, you're not going to have these in a real game. So once you're comfortable with the item times, turn them off and try without it. The cycle I was using as an example earlier is a very common one on the Catalyst, and chances are if you're getting beaten very badly, that is going to be the order of the items on this map. However, the cycle will change throughout the game. It's very unlikely that the order will stay the same for all 10 minutes. The only thing that determines the order that the items spawn is the order in which they're picked up. Another thing is that during a real game, you will not be the one picking up all three items. Your opponent will be picking up items as you are picking up items. It might be a mess. Items may be picked up at the same moment. The only thing you need to do is focus on the order that the items spawn in, not one set order. Pay attention, listen to the sounds, and know the order that the items come up in. And always put yourself in between the enemy and the next item spawning in the cycle. The cycle changes throughout the game. And this is going to be difficult, but this is why you want to practice playing with different orders by yourself so that you're comfortable with it during the game and you can focus on playing. It's equally important to know the order of the items as the out-of-control player as it is to know them as the in-control player. As the out-of-control player, it's very difficult to fight the enemy directly and you don't want to give up a lot of deaths. So you need to know the cycle to know where the in-control player is going to be because logically he is going to keep cycling the items. So let's say the cycle is this yellow, the yellow here, and then the red like we've been talking about. As soon as the enemy as in control player goes to the red armor, I know that this side of the map is safe at least for a certain amount of time. So I know I'm safe to go steal Mega or pick up uh, health or whatever I want on this side of the map. But after he's picked that up, I know he's going back to this side of the map. 
so I know it's safe to move over to this side of the map, maybe gather ion cannon, rocket launcher, and bolt rifle. Then, once I feel like I've gathered enough weapons as the out of control player, that's when I step in his way and try and retake the cycle. But before that, I use my knowledge of the order of the items to stay on the opposite side of the map of the in control player to gather weapons safely. Let's do a short review. When one player has more stack than the other player, he's going to win direct fights if all other things are equal. That means that the player with more stack can use the fact that he wins direct fights to bully the other player away from the items so he can keep taking them for himself. This is called control, and if he manages to take all the items and continue to take all of them, it's called full control. The other player is in various levels of out of control, where he can't win direct fights against the other player. The entire game revolves around knowing the cycle, or the order of the items. When you're a beginner who's in control, get to the next armor in your cycle early, then push out from there to fight the enemy, so you don't lose track of your cycle. As the out of control player, stay away until you gather weapons, then put yourself in between the in control player and the next armor in a position where you're dangerous to attack. Try to delay him long enough where you can steal the armor. Use common sense and remember that there's no pressure to fight. If a beginner is attacking you constantly and trying to pull you into a heavy fighting game when no cycle seems to be forming, ignore him and take full control. He has no idea how to play. Even if you lose a fair fight to him, once you take full control and keep cycling, he won't know what to do because you'll win every fight. In later videos, we'll cover specific methods of handling common situations and item play. This video is just meant to get you started. Is the strategy of putting yourself in between the enemy and the next armor a good idea in every situation? No. And if you watch high level people play, they're not doing this all the time, they're taking a lot more risks. The thing is, I remember being completely overwhelmed when I started because there's so many things to keep track of and the game pretty much lets you do whatever you want. This relatively basic and safe playstyle will get you through your early learning and reflex by giving you a good platform to build your knowledge. And you can go very, very far uh, in terms of the players you can beat playing in this safe way. If you want to learn to play the guitar, you don't start with music theory, you start by learning simple songs to impress girls. Keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.